What's up, everybody, and welcome to a late night after hours. This isn't just the after party. This is the after after party. The, it is 12.47 a.m. on Friday morning. The latest we've ever recorded a Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Is it? I feel like it is. And if it's not, it's close. Yeah. But we had to stay up late for this one yep. to discuss the fact that the Atlanta Falcons just drafted one of the best players, regardless of position, in, in this entire NFL draft, Texas running back Bijan Robinson. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, at number eight overall. All of a sudden, the Falcons' skill positions <laughs> are Bijan Robinson, Tyler Algier, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, Johnny Cordero, Smith. Cordero Patterson. Oh, yeah, and yeah. that guy. Yeah. Uh, Arthur Smith has a lot of weapons. Yeah. What was your initial reaction to the pick? Because we've been kind of sniffing around this one for right. a while. And then now that you've 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 spoken to Terry Fontenot, you've spoken to Arthur Smith, you we we've heard from Bijan Robinson. Yeah. What's your takeaway at the end of a very long night? I think this was a situation where the Falcons, from all the conversations that I feel like we had with all the decision makers, that they liked Bijan from the jump. Yeah. And they knew what they ha what they did in free agency, I think, set them up for what they were able to do today. I know we were talking to Terry and Arthur the other day, and Arthur made the comment about, you know, we don't feel desperate it, to go into this draft and feel like we have to have X, Y, or Z. We don't feel that way. And I think because of the moves and the money that they were able to pump into the defense, especially you go out and get Jesse Bates, Kalias Campbell, Bud Dupree, David Onyemata, Caden Ellis. I mean, literally, I'm just naming off people that they just put so much money towards to make this defense better that you get into the first round of the 2023 NFL draft and you have a guy like Bijan Robinson, which I know people are like, oh, you don't take a running back in the first round. Look, we understand the, the connotation behind that. But at the exact same time, I think the Falcons felt like more than anybody else, Bijan Robinson fit what they wanted to do offensively in 2023. Yeah, it even came up in the post round one press conference, the positionless football term. Yeah, I think Terry dropped it yeah. this time, and he's another one of those positionless guys, like Kyle Smith, like Cordero Patterson. Kyle Pitts. Like Kyle Smith is the VP of player personnel. Yeah. <laughs> it is 12.50 in late. the morning. <laughs> it's very late, and I apparently can't think of names. But yeah. you have all these guys that you can take one formation out there and line up a thousand different ways. Right. That I, I think the fit between – you can talk about culture fits. You mm -hmm. wrote a great series Thank you. Um, about – the Falcons finding culture fits, mm -hmm. right? You talk about hit the, the fit in terms of his talent level. Right. What about the yeah the fit between Bijan Robinson and Arthur Smith? Right. Yeah, and that's what I I wrote about. I definitely think that I, I recommend going back and reading um, what I wrote because I talked to Michael Petrie, who is the Falcons running backs coach, and something that he said that I thought was really it, 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 before Arthur Smith said it, Michael Petrie said it, and he he made the comment. He was like. Yes, he'll go on the roster and on the website as a running back, but he's not just a running back. He's more than a running back. And then you heard that echoed by Arthur Smith in his press conference that we just got done with where you're talking about the way, the ways that you can use him as a pass catcher as a, 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 to pound the ball on the ground as well and how this doesn't really take away, I think, from Tyler Algier. I think that's an that's an important point yeah. that fans were probably wondering about after they made the pick. Right, and I don't think that this takes away from Tyler Algier because, you know, and I wrote this, I guarantee you the amount of 22 personnel that Arthur Smith is going to throw out there in week one come September is going to be – I mean, he's going to – I can so see B. John Robinson – and Tyler Algier out there on the field at the exact same time. And I think that it's a situation, too, where they can complement each other. I wrote in our initial newser about Bijan Robinson being taken number eight overall. I said, Bijan is the lightning to Tyler Algier's thunder. Mm -hmm. To me, that's exactly how I view them. And I'm so glad that Arthur Smith got into the differences between Yes, they're both running backs, but the differences between them is it, it almost excites Arthur Smith about what he can do at this position having these two guys. Yeah, because they're both good at the same 
quote unquote elusiveness and tackle breaking metric. Yep. But he said Tyler Algier is a sledgehammer, mm -hmm. and Bijan Robinson is about contact balance. And and the thing is, is uh, that's something that I said I think in when I was writing too. It was like you look at Tyler Algier. He led the FBS in missed tack tackles, broken tackles mm -hmm. in 2022 or 2020, and then 2021 that season before he got drafted. Right. Guess who led the FBS in missed and broken tackles in 2022? Bijan Robinson. Robinson. They did it, though, in very different ways. Tyler Algier is going to run into you and run through you. Bijan Robinson is going to make you miss, mm -hmm. and that's the difference. And I think Arthur Smith, like, laid it out there where, he's, where he said the exact same thing. Like, he's, like, Tyler Algier is a sledgehammer, whereas Bijan Robinson has this elusiveness that I think – everyone talks about when they talk about this guy i think you asked a good question in the press conference about when did you when did the falcons fall in love with Bijan robinson as a prospect and terry fontenot said everything that, that every part in the step every access point was an important step as you kind of uh, build an overall evaluation but their trip to austin yeah in late march early april ish mm. ballpark Seemed to be pretty important. Arthur and Terry kind of talked about that yeah, a lot. Yeah, and I also talked to, like I said, talked to Michael Petrie about it, and that was when he said that he knew okay. was was at that tr on that trip. And he's like, you know, we send we send guys to Austin, and we get to know Bijan on another level, and we get to work out with him and have that, you know, and have dinner with him. They have dinner with him where Taquan Graham apparently orders a dinosaur sized rib, <laughs> according to Arthur Smith. It's barbecue. It's Austin, yeah. Texas, but. Uh, that was a very, I think, important moment for the coaching staff to actually be able to see, okay, how does this kid work? How does he move? How does how can we best utilize him? How can we best teach him? I think all of those things probably happened in that moment. Something that I was even talking to, but I, I honestly think it happened before then too. Mm -hmm. Like I know they're not gonna say like, oh, we fell in love with him in day one. That's not something that they're gonna say. But I do think that they were very high on. Bijan Robinson from from go mm -hmm. um, just because just from talking to people and and I talked to the area scout that uh, scouted Bijan before he was even draft eligible and something he said what he was like we were watching you know a Texas Oklahoma game or something like that and he, he made the comment he was like you know I wasn't even there to scout Bijan Robinson but I had so many notes by the end of it about Bijan Robinson and he was, without question, the best player on the field. And then Terry Fontenot says that exact same thing in the press conference. When people say the same things over and over again, like, you have to pay attention to that. And that's why I truly believe it's like, okay, they're saying that this is a guy who's the best player on the field. When did you find out about that? Probably the first time that you watched him play against other people, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. that, to me, th like, the timeline of this, I, I know it's not like I'm beating a dead horse probably, but, like, I really do think that they had Bijan Robinson marked on top of their draft boards for a very long time, and I think the moment that they saw that they were at number eight and he's there, and they're like, you know what, like, let's go get him. Yeah, and uh, Terry Fontenot after the press conference, uh, I had a chance to catch up with him a bit about the time when he's on the clock, when the Falcons are on the clock and he's available. Calls are still coming in, and they're still taking those calls. They're excited. This is the guy. He's right there. They're still taking the calls. They're doing the due diligence. And he said, you're trying to, ray, trying to weigh the risk of going down and maybe losing him yeah. versus the possibility of picking up an extra asset. Mm -hmm. And do you roll the dice or do you not? And how much would it hurt if you roll the dice and you pick up the extra asset, but you don't get the guy that you woke up in the morning wanting to make a Falcon? Yeah. And, I th and ultimately, he was saying that, the offers that were coming in, the, the calls that he was hearing from, and the homework in terms of trade parameters that they did before the draft started, mm -hmm. that they were weighing all those things in the moment. And as you get on the clock and you're moving towards it and you're about ready to make that pick, the risk wasn't worth it to them yeah. to try to pick up the extra asset. Now, we don't know what they were offered and how that all breaks down, but I think that that's powerful that, look, the guy is right there. You still pick up the phone. You still talk to people. You still do your due diligence. And then you say, uh, we don't want to lose this guy mm -hmm. or even the, the possibility of it. And I think ultimately that's why they stuck there at eight. And I think 
the biggest issue that if you're a detractor of this pick is the the running back value thing. Right, you don't right? get to a second contract. That maybe you don't get yeah. to your second contract. Or maybe you can – I think of top ten picks, and I think of uh, LaDainian Tomlinson and Saquon Barkley. And, um, you know, there's very few of them. I mean, LT's, what, 2001? <laughs> I'm old. But nonetheless, you, you, you think about, like, what you can get from guys like that. And if you truly believe, if you have conviction that this guy can be really special, his carry counts at Texas mm-hmm. – weren't astronomical right right so and as, as you pointed out in the press conference as well he's been pretty healthy knock on wood yeah they which didn't like made you do they did not like that question i asked about durability and they're like how dare you <laughs> bring that up but nonetheless that, that you're getting one of these complete packages and obviously these top two running backs that were taken in the first round are were, were valued by teams across the league because right. Falcons take B, uh, B. John Robinson at 8 and at 12 Detroit takes Jameer Gibbs, J- Jameer Gibbs mm-hmm. who Georgia Tech fans know yeah. um, so I, I think ultimately you can talk about I, d- I don't know all, like all this value talk sometimes it, it kind of drives me nuts did you get the player that you wanted the Falcons did the Falcons did will they be proven right for making that move or wrong you never know until yeah. the guy actually starts to play mm-hmm. but they accomplished what they set out to do. They weighed the risks and the rewards. We talked about this player, the way he fits with Arthur Smith. There's so much fit, right? Also, this dude is like brimming with positivity. Mm-hmm. Uh, he told our Taylor Vismore that he smiles 90% of his life. That's the way. Which is very possible. Um, so I, I think for all those reasons, culture fit, scheme fit, talent you know, fit with what they have fit. Mm-hmm. and the fact that they're building a young core with Pitts and London and Ritter where these guys can build chemistry and play yeah. together for a long time. I'll so say this too before we wrap. Mm-hmm. A young quarterback's best friend is a solid run game. Yeah. And, and you go out and you have a guy who in his rookie year broke a thousand yards. Then you go out and get a guy who is arguably – one of the best running backs to go through the draft in a, in a minute. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that a lot of people would say that you don't have a guy go number eight overall as a running back and it not be that way. And you what, have do you, what do you think Arthur Smith's doing? He's setting up for this young quarterback to be able to go out and be like, all right, here, I gave you Kyle Pitts, I gave you Drake Lennon, I gave you Bijan Robinson. Uh, I also re-signed Chris Lindstrom, Caleb McGarry. Go. Right, that you almost that it's possible that you could have the same offensive line if Matt Hennessy plays left guard, and then you've brought in all these uh, young players. So they are setting up Desmond Ritter for to have a great chance to succeed. That's why. Look, we're not going to give a grade here. It's not an A B C D no. F. But I will say that I like the thought of getting Bijan before the draft. You and I talked a lot about that. Mm-hmm. I think it was a good pick for this team at this time with the core that they have. Well, I think back to – and we really need to wrap up. But I, I really – I think back to uh, the Drake London pick last year. There were a lot of people who didn't think that Drake London w- should have been the first receiver off the board. Right. And it, we said over and over – we said I said on this podcast, it was like Drake London – may not have been at the top of everybody's wide receiver position, but he was at the top of the Falcons because he was the prototype of what the Falcons needed, what Arthur Smith needed in this offense. And that's what they went out and got. Right. Uh, And I think that's a great point. The same thing can probably be said for Kyle Pitts as they continue to build up and try to stack this draft class. Guys, thank you so much for listening to this. I don't know, in the middle of the night or when you first wake up, whenever you have an opportunity. Uh, Thanks to our producer sam larson yeah. who does a lot of work without getting a lot of credit also sam don't cut this <laughs> uh and we definitely appreciate him and zach and everybody who works behind the scenes on this podcast it's never more important than at 101 a.m when you're <laughs> recording it thank you guys so much we will talk to you very soon yeah. probably shortly after the draft concludes see ya <laughs>